and uh, away we go. All righty, folks. Here we are. We're getting ready for our first series of the day. It's going to be a ZVZ. So we are going to start off with a little bit of excitement. Thank you so much for hanging tough with me. We're going to jump into Johnson versus Nuke Official. I'm in space. How am I breathing? Well, see, this box around me actually contains air. It's got a little tank that you just can't see off screen. So, so no, we are, we are absolutely in great shape. So I appreciate you thinking about me. That makes me a happy camper. Oh, thank you for not completely breaking here, computer. Much appreciated. Yes, there is a two-minute delay. Exclamation point. Uh, 2M in the chat. We'll get you in on that. Folks, we've done it. We're here. Woo! Our first series of the TSL5 ESU qualifiers. Spawning in the bottom right-hand corner. Playing for Team Loco. Give it up for Nuke Official. And spawning in the top left, our blue Zerg player. Currently teamless. Give it up for Johnson. So, E-U-Z-V-Z. -Z. Ho, 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 ho. If anybody knows anything about ZVZ, it is absolutely the EU server because there are just plenty of Zerg players and already we're seeing quite the different approach between our two players. Nuke opting to go for that really quick pool. And actually going to try and play it safe here as well, taking the natural expansion at the 16 supply mark so this isn't going to be completely committed engagement here for nuke i think nuke just wants to put on a little bit of pressure i mean think about think about the player's perspective in an event like this you don't want to bump out right away in the first series you don't know how cheesy your opponent's going to be and zvz in general by nature is just a really really aggression heavy engagement so Playing it safe, and I respect that. Johnson going to play a little bit more standard, which is totally fine. I think this is going to be uh, a great way to open up. Now, this is a best of three. And this is also a double elimination bracket. So, if any of our players do exit today, first game, it'll be okay. Because they'll have a lower bracket to participate in. So... It will be wonderful. So that will provide us with a lot of games. Now, I can tell you with full confidence that there are probably 2,000. <laughs> and I'm only slightly exaggerating. <laughs> I think there are at least like 30 community casters. So there are a lot of people watching these games right now. Which, by the way, I haven't talked much about the game. Hasn't been a whole lot here. Johnson not going for the third hatch until just now. Was waiting for his uh, 32 drone to pop out here. Nuke's already down on his. And he's actually a little bit lower supply here. So that is something to note. Nuke is going to dive up in here into the main mineral line and try and get a little bit of a scout off and doesn't see a whole lot. Um, oh, he was I think he was going to try and hide in that corner, but no such luck. Link speed is about to finish up for both players. Nuke's going to have his just a little bit sooner. He's going to use that to his advantage, try and dash around. He's going to see this veiling nest go down for Johnson at the front, and it's going to be a, a Ling response here. Ten more Lings on the way. Johnson's going to respond with his own lings as well. He has droned significantly higher than Nuke here, so Nuke can jump on top of this army-wise. Metabolic boost now finishing up for Johnson. He's going to have the response here, but now the Banelings are going to be morphing in. Baneling Nest not quite done yet for Johnson. It's going to be a little while before his Banelings pop here. Ooh, a couple of these Banelings are actually not going to be allowed to finish. In fact, all of... Oh, the one did pick up the remainder, but... Those were Banelings that needed to make connections with the mineral lines. Johnson is doing a really nice job of picking off morphing in Banelings. Three Banelings are now able to morph and run in. Johnson's going to be able to create any of his own. He's just now working on them now. Four Banelings in production. 
Nuke has an opportunity. Oh, makes an incredible connection with Zerglings on Johnson's side. That's going to force him to be way more aggressive and have to build more Lings. Behind this, Nuke is slowly trying to catch back up. Banelings are going to move on in here. Will they be able to protect the hatchery? They will for right now. Some good connections on these Banelings. This is going to wipe out most of the Zerglings for Nuke. But that hatchery is so low. Can these two Lings do it? Can they clean this hatchery up? Oh, they can. Oh, they absolutely can. That is huge for Nuke. Johnson needs to get damage done across the map at this point. So we're going to run over to the third base location. 18 lings in production for Nuke. The army values are practically even, and so are the worker counts. More Banelings being morphed in at home. Meanwhile, Johnson trying to pick up the pieces here. He is going to lose that Larva, which is going to cause him problems. Nuke overwhelming Johnson here. 52 to 46 supply. This isn't done yet. We are always in a ZVZ at this point. We are always one Baneling away. One Baneling away from an interaction where the entire tide of a match can swing. Really nice connection here by Nuke. Trading out 2-4-2 two, two back at home. A Roach Warren does go down for Johnson. He is going to try and transition out of this. He doesn't want to stay in Ling Bane forever. Meanwhile, Nuke actually has nothing in production right now. He is um, investing his entire lot in Ling Bane. Nice split off of Zerglings to pick off the Banelings of Johnson. And that's actually going to be the, the end of his Baneling count for right now. Nuke is actually going to... It's gonna drone up a little bit. Well, he's got the he's got the army to do so. Lair goes down for Johnson. Johnson, it, I, I'm I think is feeling a little bit of pressure right now. He's trying to he's trying to transition into a little bit stronger tech going into that Roach plus one timing, but he's doing it off of two bases. So Nuke's allowed to continue droning and protect on his side of the map while being able to get a Roach Warren up. Nuke slips ahead in the worker count and has the current counter to what Johnson still has for aggression on the map. Four Zerglings are going to dash on in. They are going to see the Roach Warren and they are going to see the the Lair finish up here. It's going to pull Johnson's Lings entirely back home. Two workers actually do get picked off here. That's in great damage for Nuke. Every little bit helps here. Oh, Baneling. Baneling, Baneling, Baneling. Nuke trying his best. Oh, Nuke trying his best to, to mitigate that damage um, does save all the Banelings, but does lose a chunk of workers. Little Baneling run by here in the third base. Doesn't find any workers. He hasn't quite saturated that just yet. It's going to trade out a reasonable amount here for those workers. So not a terrible position for Johnson to be in sort sort of stabilizing at this point but right now the big talking point is that lack of a third base the longer Johnson goes without a third base the more difficult this becomes for him as Nuke is able to continue outpacing him on larva count and Johnson's going to need to figure that out here he is going to take that uh, scout in at the natural location ravagers are already morphed in as both players move into that roach ravager primary army plus one's already complete for Johnson and is working on his roach speed as well so he will have the advantage tech wise there but if nuke's able to stay on creep at home he might not need the he might not need the speed upgrade to defend. Roaches and Ravagers going to try and pick off those morphing Banelings, and he is going to pick clear those up, so that's a really nice pick. Roaches are going to pressure at the third while the Lings try and get a run by at the natural location. So Nuke is going to have to try and juggle a little bit of, um, of saving here. Oh, Baneling does pick off a little bit of the Zergling run by. Not entirely, though. But here's the true engagement here. Ling's getting cleaned up in the main and the natural, and the roaches are getting pushed back as of right now. Hydras are on the way for Nuke as well, opting not even to worry about the roach, uh, the roach speed upgrade. I think he should continue to get that, especially as tunneling claws being researched at this point. Three workers did end up going down, so Johnson able to capitalize on a little bit of damage here. 
but currently sitting up a little bit higher on on tech count. I think this is this is a dangerous game for Nuke to play if if Nuke all of a sudden doesn't uh, feel that he can turn the tide. Ooh, a nice little roach run by here coming up for Johnson, but if he, he doesn't feel like he can turn the tide, he will have a difficult time running away and retreating from the main army. Johnson is going to get scouted here in a nice little rally of roaches. is going to be able to intercept this, but this is going to prompt Johnson here to continue pushing. Roaches are going to run right up into the main base to try and deal some economic damage, and they will find that economic damage. Workers going down while the main force of the army meets Nuke at his third base. A couple of Ravager Biles do go down, force a little bit of microing from Johnson. But Johnson's going to leverage that uh, that tech upgrade advantage. Plus one on both players, but the positioning power is strong. Hydras are now going to be able to come out and provide a little more DPS, and Nuke is able to push that off, but at the cost of seven workers. Lurkers are already done, so that is going to be the tech of choice. Roach speed now finally getting finished up. <clears throat> a fourth base is also on the way as well. Both of these players seem rather evenly matched. I'm really, really enjoying this matchup. What a great game one of this series. Plus two now on the way for Johnson as the first set of lurkers are on their way into the map. Only two at this point. Plus one carapace also being completed as well. Nuke's going to try and set up his own little roach run by as all... Oh, Okay, is he going to be able to see this? I I mean, he can see it on the map. Oh, he has vision. Oh, he had vision for a moment. All right, is he going to capitalize on it? He does. He does see it. So roaches are going to get split up between the main and the natural, and that, again, is going to prompt the main army to start coming out in force. Bulk of the army does get pulled into the main, It'll only be a matter of time before the remainder starts uh, interacting here. The forces in the natural haven't been spotted just yet, but lurkers on the high ground going to try and protect the chamber in between bases here. And uh, and Nuke is, Nuke is kind of fighting from a back foot here. Johnson really being able to jump on top of this. Third base does go down. So this now becomes uh, an evened match economically. I mean, he will be able to trade all of those workers over, but I think he's now given up the uh, the goose on his uh, on his third base here. I guess his fourth base location. Lurkers are going to continue to try and parry forward here as uh, both players dodging Biles left and right. Johnson still has that group of five roaches tucked away in the back of Nuke's natural expansion. Should he ever decide to pull, to pull the trigger and deal that kind of damage? But he does get Tunneling Claws yet again. So he's going to be able to retreat back to his base and get and get some health back. Um, some really good, good positioning here by Nuke. He's able to get those Lurkers all the way in. Roaches are going to be able to pop. There's a great Concave here. But does he have anything to jump on top of the Lurkers with? I think he does. I think all the Lurkers have been picked away. Good concave here by Nuke. Is he going to be able to hold? Those Hydras are going to be able to out DPS just a little bit, and he is going to be able to hold this for just now. Johnson's going to have to rely on those reinforcements to pin this down and push this back. But I'm wondering if the damage is going to be done here. Johnson's going to lose almost an entire worker line worth of workers, and the third base is going to go down. Johnson. Oh, one more there. There we go. Johnson's now officially back to two base. Nuke continuing to long distance mine here. Oh, it, Roaches going to uh, going to pull and fire here. Oh, he must have uh, he must have unburrowed those Roaches during the fight. I didn't see any workers go down, so Nuke must have pulled in just enough time. Oh, Nuke, come on, my dude. All you got to do is relocate those. All right, both players trying to lick their wounds here as we get into the 15-minute mark of a ZVZ. Who would have guessed? Chet, who would have guessed? 
few more workers go down. These roaches being extremely obnoxious here. As it's going to pull the entire army over to deal with this. And these roaches will finally go down. Some more lurkers being morphed in. Six here. Um, Johnson coming with yet another army. Johnson has the army advantage here. 74 to 54. Nuke is... Oh, Nuke's going to be able to jump on top of this and deal a little bit of damage. And Johnson actually doesn't have the whole army here. His army went back home. And that's actually unfortunate because it's pulled Nuke a little bit out of position here. And I think Johnson is just going to be able to capitalize on that. Ah, Lurkers are out of position. He's going to have to relocate those. Yeah, and this fourth base is going to be is going to go down. But he might be able... Oh, no, the Roaches have the escape path. That's actually unfortunate. One Roach does remain in the main base of Nuke. Both players reset once again. Both players sitting on three base economy. Nuke is going to try and get out and take his fourth base. So he's going to be a little bit ahead on, on the base count. But not by much. Worker counts remain to be about the same. Johnson with that continued army advantage. Both players sitting on the same upgrades, I believe, at this point. The income has kind of, yeah, just gone back and forth here. Uh, Johnson spent a majority of the game in that economic lead, but here comes a big engagement here. Lurkers are able to get positioned, dealing a lot of nice damage to that ball of roaches. And Nuke's going to continue pushing on forward. Johnson not, uh, not dealing with the advantage right now. Nuke's going to get surrounded, though. Those lurkers are definitely in danger, kind of firing in all sorts of directions, and that's not what you want in that lurker ball. You want those lurkers always firing together in the same direction so they get as much damage as possible. This seems like uh, the world's greatest game of direct strike. Uh, both players taking shots at each other, pushing as much as they can, and then falling back only to have the other player push onto them. Nuke's fourth base is now complete. No fourth base up yet for Johnson. Johnson continuing to capitalize on that army lead. And he does need to be careful. If he's not... If if Nuke isn't careful, he's going to... Uh, he's going to continue losing this uh, supply advantage that Johnson has. 132 to 103. As long as he continues to make lurkers... Which, he's got two on the way. What does he have for a lurker count? Just the two. Two more on the way. Nuke needs Nuke needs a little bit stronger vision here. Okay, he just now gets a chance to see the army. Little Roach run by. Going to try and take out that fourth base yet again. And I think he's going to be successful. Um, Nuke has got to pay attention right here, though. This is the this is the dangerous part of the army. Oh, no, those lurkers are kind of caught. One lurker is immediately going to get picked off by a, a corrosive of Biles. Lurkers are now immediately out of position here. Uh, Johnson, oh, uh, Johnson backing himself up into the range of those spine crawlers. So spine crawlers are able to help just a little bit, but Nuke not trading very efficiently here. Johnson doing a nice job going into a fourth base here behind all of this aggression. 11 workers have gone down, and I think a bulk of the army has gone down for Nuke as well. I think, I think it's going to be difficult for Nuke to try and work his way out of this. He just has not had a whole lot of response for all of these roaches that continue to pile across the map for Johnson. Also, by the way, chat, I'm hoping by the time you hear this that I'll have a chance to edit it. Um, let me know. How's the audio sound? Is the, is the music in good shape? Is my voice in good shape? Can you hear everything you need to hear? Please let me know. I'd love to get that adjusted so that way I have it set and in place for future games in this cast two more workers that do get picked off here at the third base location and that is going to force johnson to continue pushing inwards uh, if he stands on top of those lurkers those lurkers will get a lot of free kills nuke uh, nuke hanging on he does not want to tap out early what he doesn't realize though i mean he he might 
I mean, maybe he sees it. Uh, I don't think he knows about that fourth base just yet. He does have the scout up there, but nothing that's helpful as of this point. All right, now that's a pretty significant lurker count. If they can get positioned. Oh, head on down. Head on down to Lurker Town. All right, so lurkers are going to be able to push that off for the time being. He does need to continue being careful, though. Too many of those corrosive biles will shut everything down for Nuke. This is kind of a last-ditch army here. He, he He's not out of this yet. A couple of, uh, One good engagement is all he would need. But he's got to be careful. Every corrosive bile he eats is one more unit he cannot replace. Oh, trying to fight up a ramp. Not advantageous for Nuke. Um, He has juked the army out. I think he's going to try and... Yeah, he's going to try and post up here on the center of this ramp. But he needs, he needs all those lurkers to fire straight down. They cannot be divided here. Well, this is a, actually a really good engagement here for Nuke. Nuke does clear up a lot of this army. Well, look at that. Just like I said, ZVZ, you're always one engagement away. So Nuke's got to feel good about that. But the problem is, is he doesn't have much of an economy behind it. Johnson is sitting on a, a fourth base. And Johnson has the uh, superior larva count. So I'm not entirely sure what Nuke uh, feels comfortable trying to transition into. He's going to build lings, and he's trying to march more and more roaches across the field. Remember, folks, this is just a game number one. We have at least one more game after this. <laughs> I have a feeling uh, I I don't I don't see Nuke hanging on here. I mean, if he's able if he's able to get a really good connection here, I mean, maybe maybe. Maybe he picks these roaches off. I mean, he needs to go right for that. He needs a ling run by right there. Pull those links. Pull them right there. That's what I'm talking about. All right. So now he's getting some economic damage done here as well. One queen does go down. These ravagers are going to get morphed. Ah, but it's not enough. GG is called. And Johnson takes game number one in this best of three. Pace ourselves. That was a 22-minute game. Holy crap, that was... Uh, holy, cr holy crap, that was map one. <laughs> uh, so, not out of it quite yet. Johnson does need to win yet another game before he moves on in this bracket. Cheers, chat. A little bit of coffee. Oh, thank you so much for hanging out. I'm so excited. I'm so glad that you guys are here today. We're going to go to Eternal Empire for map number two. Another ZVZ. Oh, I don't want to be... No, no, no. No, no, not me. There we go. Alrighty. Go, go. Okay. We are going to go to Eternal Empire. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out in the chat. Lurched, Drone Rush, Mugetsu Gabe, Lazy Turtles, Owen. Oh. All of you awesome people saving esports. How about the tuba? Do you like the tuba? I kind of love the tuba. I think that's super, super cool. All right. Help. Help. Get me in game, please. Help. Thank you. All righty. Here we are, folks. We are jumping into map number two here. It is a best of three. And if we're going to move on to a third game, it's going to come off the back of this person's victory, spawning in the right top right corner of Eternal Empire, playing for Team Loco. Give it up for Nuke. 
and spawning in the bottom left. Going for an extra early pool here. Our blue Zerg player, give it up for Johnson. All right, all right. So, Nuke was the player in map number one that went for the early pool. He's not doing that this time. So we're gonna have to see how he deals with early aggression here. Cause it's gonna be four sixlings coming out here and that's pretty standard. So, we're gonna have to see where things go from here. Spine crawler already coming down. Oh, oh, he's getting he's getting silly. Johnson's getting silly, Chad. He's flexing. Nuke pulls uh, the right amount of drones, and this is actually this is the perfect amount of drones. You need four to get the most efficient trade here against everything. Oh, and Johnson's pulling the boys. All in the boys. Oh, that's just rocks. That's not helpful. Spine crawler trying to go down once again. Ooh, he does get another block off on it, but this is a lot of lost resource time here. He is gonna see that this is that this is here. So it's gonna be a matter of how he responds. Ling's immediately going down here, and Nuke's gonna get his own gonna get his own spine crawler and now the dance begins dance drones dance the dance of life the spine crawler does get picked off for nuke so that is a lot of lost economy meanwhile the spine crawler for johnson is still in the game here it's a really good micro by johnson here N only nine workers left oh johnson has so much of an advantage oh more lings are pouring across the map for Johnson, and the spine crawler is going to finish. No, Nuke is in trouble here. I think he has lost all of his work. He has no workers. He has one queen, and two lings, and a dream. But this spine crawler has a dream too. Johnson's got workers back at home. This is unfortunate. This is very unfortunate for Nuke. Uh, this spine crawler is going to go uncontested here at this point. I don't think the queen can outrange it. And, I mean, Nuke only has 40 minerals. So, uh, with Johnson coming across the map with more and more lings, yeah, this is just unfortunately the end of the game for Nuke. Yeah, he's going to try and attack that. And the queen is going to be able to get picked away. GG is called. Ugh, unfortunate outcome for Nuke, but congratulations to Johnson as he moves on to the next round. And that is going to be the end of our series.